I've already showed with Photoshop how to make, uh, how to use slicing to make multiple images out of one in a way that will make them tile together. So I've got three images from that example and I've just imported them as three different sprites. And I'll, I'll call them uh, sprite two here. I don't know why it's, well, I guess it's just in order here, but I'll call it tile zero. I'll call the next one tile one and the last one I'll call tile two. Okay, and you can see I can I can kind of drag them around, position them anywhere I want. The whole task here is to to make them move on their own as I uh, use the right and left arrow keys to move the cat back and forth. First of all, where is the cat? He's underneath all of these other sprites. So the easiest way to make him uh, come forward is to say whenever I start the game, make the cat come to the front. There we go. Go to the front. So if I hit the flag, there he is. There's layers just like in Photoshop or Illustrator, and that's how we can get him to, um, to come to the top layer. I should also make him move to the middle of the screen every time the game starts. I need a, a variable to keep track of his position. Normally we can see where his position is. He moves right and left on the screen, but in this game he actually stays in the middle and the background moves. So it would be nice to know where, uh, where, the, where we are in the larger map, which is actually larger than the stage, right? So in this case, it's three times the size of the stage. We can move all the way out here or all the way in the other direction. I'm gonna make a variable that everyone can see, all of the sprites can see, called cat position on map. So that's on this larger map, the, the idea that we have something that's actually 360 pixels wide, but 480 times three, which is 1440, I think, wide. Okay, so while we're at it, we'll just set his position to zero, which is the X position. Throughout this whole thing, we're just ignoring the Y axis entirely. We always want to just stay at zero for Y. And uh, all of our moving around of these um, maps in the background is gonna happen on the X axis. So we just have this variable that we're, we're using to keep track of the cat's position on the map. I'd like to deal with the right and left arrows right now. And we've seen this before. If someone presses the right arrow key, then what we want to do is, normally we would actually have the char character move using motion. Here, I actually want to just increase or decrease this cat position on map. So I'll change the position by uh, two. And if the, uh, actually, you know what else I want to do is, is make him look like he's walking. So at the same time, I'll, I'll change to next costume. If I just duplicate this, I can set this up for the right and left arrows. And here I'd want to actually probably make him um, be at minus two. Let's look at just the number here and see if this is working out. As I move to the right, he zooms forward. I move to the left, he zooms backward, even in the negative direction. You can see right there. It's going too fast, which we've encountered before. The way we've handled that is to just add a little weight after or before we change the uh, costume. Put it. I'll put this here and okay. Okay, so now if I use the right arrow key and the left arrow key, he doesn't turn around. If you want to see how to make that happen, you can look in one of the other videos. I'm just interested in getting his position to update as I use the right and left keys. I think we're pretty much done with the cat entirely. Everything else is about moving the tiles back and forth. So uh, how do we make that happen? First thing is I want to set, just to be sure, I'll set its Y position to zero. It's always going to be at the zero axis. If I hit run right now, we can see it, it moved right back up into the right position. 
can remove this out of the way, it'll it'll get right back into the correct position again. So that's good. That's that's not going to hurt us. That's for sure. It'll only help. I want a variable. So the whole goal is to make a setup here for tile one that I can just apply to each of these tiles. Instead of having each one be its own custom set of scripts, we'll set up tile zero and then just drag and drop it onto the other tiles and they'll all work. So what that means is we, we need to have, first of all, a variable that's only for this sprite and it's called my tile number. So which, which tile are we on? And this is tile zero, so I'll just set it to zero right away. This should be the only thing we have to change as we go to each of these uh, different sprites. <clears throat> we also need to know what its starting position is. I'm putting my in front of anything that's um, for this sprite only. And that's just for me, so I can understand it better. Not a bad idea, though. And I'm going to set my starting position to zero. So this, this tile starts right in the uh, middle of the screen. That doesn't, of course, actually make the tile move to the middle of the screen, so I can add something here that says set x to whatever I just figured out is the starting position. I could have just put a zero here, but you'll see this makes more sense in a minute because I, I actually want to calculate the starting position based on which tile I'm at. So for tile one, its starting position won't be zero, it'll actually be 480, which is, uh, this is this distance is 240. So it'll be 240 plus 240, which puts it kind of in the next, um, it puts it one screen away from this one to the right. For tile two, it would be two times uh, the, the, width of the width of the screen, which is 480. So actually, I've already figured that out. There's, there's a pattern there. Tile zero is at zero which is zero times the width of the screen, that's zero. When I go to tile one, I want it to be at one times the width of the screen, which is 480. And when I get to tile two, I want it to be two times the width of the screen, which is 960. So this is a way of positioning them one after the other in a way that they all meet up at the edge. Why don't I do that right now? I've just figured out the math. It's the tile number, So that's zero in this case, one there, two there, times the width of the screen. So that's 480. Something that's nice to do is to actually make a variable uh, in, the, in the stage called stage width. And I'll, it's, it's something that I'll never actually change. It's just a variable that I can refer back to, and it looks nicer than having the number 480 in there. If I were ever to look back at this, I might think, what, why did I have a 480 in there? But I'll never wonder why I'm referring in my calculations to something called stage width. It's kind of to make this more English language-like. So right away, when the game starts, I should set the stage width to uh, 480. This is just to make everything more readable. Now I've got something called stage width. Whoa, okay, that works. So stage width times tile number. Again, for tile zero, that comes out to zero. For tile one, that comes out to one times 480. That's 480. Tile two, that comes out to two times 480, which is 960. So this is working out great. We'll just copy this right onto each of these tiles and they'll all work because we're letting the computer do the math instead of putting the number 480 or 960 or whatever in its place. This is what we have a programming language for, like this, like Scratch. This is why we have a computer, so it can do the math for us. Okay, so that's to set the starting position, and uh, I think that's all set. Then I want this basically to be able to move as I as I move the cat back and forth. We know that when we move the cat back and forth with the right and left arrow keys, it changes uh, this variable that the cat has called cat position on map we can use that here. And I want to constantly be updating the current position of this tile. I'll make a variable for that. My current position, different than my starting position, right? It's for this tile only. I want to be always updating my current position
to be equal to, um, well, for now I can just say the cat position. We'll see what happens. This, of course, doesn't actually move the tile. Just like here, it didn't move the tile to set my starting position. I had to actually say set x to that new variable. So I'll do that here. Set x to my current position. That actually moves the thing on the screen. I'll try running this, and as I move to the right, it actually looks like the uh, the map is going the wrong way. I'm clicking the left arrow, the hitting the left key right now, so that's not working. That's easy to fix. The cat should instead of adding to when I hit the right arrow, it should probably be subtracting to, make it move a little faster. And then here, this should be adding. Try it again. Right arrow, left arrow. Perfect. We can see that the, the other tiles aren't moving, but that's because I haven't, uh, they have no scripts associated with them yet. For, let's figure out this tile zero thing first. Cat position on map works for tile zero because if you look at the cat position number, you can see that it's, uh, there's the cat position number, it's minus 80, and the, this tile's current position is also minus 80. That works out great but we know that the other tiles are gonna be that number um, plus 480, because they, it should be 480 pixels over to the right, and the next one should be 960 over to the right. This sounds familiar. We've already done this calculation before. It's basically my starting position. We figured out that it's the stage width times my tile, so we can use my starting position again and use that in this calculation here. The way it should look is it's not just the cat position on the map, it's the cat position on the map plus my starting position. Whoa. Okay. This should work exactly the same. It does. My current position is still the same as uh, cat position. But for tile one, it'll be different because the starting position part is different for tile one. Calculate it differently. That's it. That's that should actually work out fine. The last detail, and I could I could show you um, could show you where the trouble is, but I'll just give you this this part, and you can totally just copy it. This is also in the in the lesson, but there's there's something else here. I don't want all three of these maps to be around at any given time. I want the ones that aren't on the screen in this range to be hidden. And here's how I do that. Always be looking to see if, I'll use if else so you can. Always looking to see if our I think I have to just lay this out and then explain it. If the absolute value of this tile's current position is greater than the stage width. So that means right now it's, uh, you know, tile two is way out here, way out to the right. That's, you know, maybe like it's maybe it's 500 pixels out right now. If we if we take the absolute value of 500, that's greater than 480. So that means it should be hidden at this moment. Only when it ends up in the range of the screen, meaning it's uh, somewhere around this uh, 0 to 480 is is it should it be uh, shown. So you can just copy this chunk and it kind of it, it's basically so that all anything that's not involved on the screen is is hidden at that moment. Let's try this out. Go towards the right. Well, it it's not working, and the reason why is we've got everything figured out for tile zero, and like I said, this should be the same for tile one and tile two. But right now they don't have any scripts. All I have to do is just drag this onto each tile, and drag this onto each tile and drag this onto each tile. Try again. Not quite. Okay. 
This is because in each of these scripts, my tile number should be set to the tile number that we've got. Right now, they're all just drawing on top of each other. So now all the calculations should be moved over from, um, from the one previous by stage width. There we go. We're moving across three different ones. You can see there's a little bit of a flicker where the two tiles meet, but that's actually just because you're viewing it in Scratch. If you look at the presentation mode, it gets rid of little glitches like that, and you won't have that as an issue. If I hit the left arrow, works too. So this is it. Everything is working. This is everything that you need in the tiles. And then the cat is basically, its whole job is to update the um, cat position. The rest of this stuff is just so that it looks like it's running. There you go.